as someone who had friends who were in the Twin Towers and who were killed and uh, another person I knew who was uh, on the airplane that crashed. And uh, uh, from that perspective, obviously, I was outraged and felt that my country was under attack. And I had just served in the US government for a number of years before. But my second reaction was as a human rights lawyer. Uh, I had been in the government uh, representing the State Department on human rights issues around the world. And I knew that uh, it's in times of terrorism or claimed terrorism that human rights uh, tend to be uh, suppressed. There is no such thing as people or places that are outside the scope of human rights law. Human rights is universal, applies to everyone and applies everywhere. And suddenly we're living in a world in which we have places in which there is no law like Guantanamo and people who have no rights like enemy combatants. After 9-11, a lot of people just said, you know, what, what's law got to do with it? What's law but a, you know, secondhand emotion? <laughs> and that uh, um, this was a time for war. And uh, when we're in war, forget about law. Ten bombs exploded within 10 minutes of each other at railway stations of Madrid. Nearly 200 people are dead and more than 1,200 wounded. The worst terrorist attack in Spain's history. Retaliation for Spain's support for the United States. Bomb blasts tore through three London underground trains and a double deck. At least 37 people were killed and hundreds more injured in the attack. It seems probable that the attack was carried out by Islamist extremist terrorists. This is going to divide the British nation. What we're saying is this, if we are going to engage in these searches in the subway, let's do so in a more honest and a more effective manner. And in doing so, you have to factor in history. We shouldn't hide from history, we shouldn't run away from history. And the history is, if you look at um, international terrorism, if you look at all the jihadis that have engaged in terrorism in Western Europe and America, they've been uh, young Muslim men. We never said only stop young Muslim men. We never said don't stop white, black, orange, and in between. We just don't see the common sense in stopping a 75-year-old Sicilian lady from Brooklyn. If they search every 10th person without regard to anything at all, that's probably not a smart way is it to do. We know that's not a smart way to do. I'm not for racial profiling. I am for terrorist profiling. Terrorist profiling means in a way, you can you take what you know about terrorists and you put them in the computer and it tells you something about terrorists. They're probably going to be male, not always. They're probably not going to be above, over 80 years of age and then they're probably not going to be under 10 years of age. On September 11th, we were attacked by 19 people. Fact of the matter is, all 19 of them were male. All 19 of them were young. All 19 of them were from predominantly Muslim countries. You can't just ignore that as if you didn't know it. Who are you actually making safer? Uh, isn't there a balance that we're striking here? Uh, the goal of all of this is to reduce the number of violations, human rights violations, uh, against innocent civilians on all sides of the conflict. Uh, on September 11th, uh, we lost uh, more than 3,000 innocent civilians. Uh, that was a gross human rights violation. But is the answer to turn around and start targeting thousands and thousands of other innocent civilians? Um, uh, to be honest, I think that that's a very uh, ineffective way to achieve that result, uh, piling violations on violations. The law on the books, the law that bans racial profiling, has placed uh, a seed of doubt in the minds of the men and women engaging in these searches. If I'm a, a man or a woman in the NYPD, and I'm in the subways doing these searches, and I stop three Muslim men in a row, if I stop a fourth one, is my superior going to accuse me of breaking the law? Is the American Civil Liberties Union going to accuse me of breaking the law? Is Reverend Al Sharpton going to have a protest? And my concern is that uh, law enforcement has to look over their shoulder, and law enforcement will be uh, reluctant uh, to do its job out of fear that somebody's going to say that you're violating the law. If we look at what our record is, 
of profiling on the basis of national origin. Um, it's abysmal. In the immediate aftermath of September 11th, the FBI rounded up close to 1,000 people and put them in, de in jail, put them in detention. And two years after the fact, um, the Office of Inspector General of the United States Department of Justice concluded that virtually everyone who was rounded up um, was either rounded up in error or they had absolutely nothing to do with terrorism. So it was this knee-jerk impulse to round people up on the basis of race or national origin. And it yielded nothing of value whatsoever. And you imagine, what would have happened if all of those law enforcement resources had been used in a smarter, more effective way than just saying, well, gee, they look like terrorists. But if a balding, skinny Italian-American from Staten Island has robbed five banks on Staten Island, and you stop 50 skinny, bal uh, balding Italian-Americans, that's not racial profiling. The act of being searched, the act of being targeted for searching, the act of being pulled aside in front of your fellow, you know, people, whether it's colleagues, family, friends, just people you don't know at the airport, all of that is an act of singling somebody out for being terrorist-like or, or somebody who doesn't belong. And that in and of itself is a harmful act. We're not fighting crime here. This is a, this is a war. And to ignore that and to not factor that in to uh, the decision-making process to stop people, I think is, uh, is foolhardy. I don't believe um, it translates into the NYPD doing everything that it can uh, to make New York is safe. Given how much violence was done against the Arabs, Muslims, and South Asians uh, in the immediate aftermath of September 11th, I think that sent a kind of cue or signal to the government that there was a willingness on the part of the public to accept racial profiling by the government at levels that never would have been accepted before. We know, you know, polls that were taken before September 11th show that 80 percent of Americans were opposed to racial profiling. After September 11th, 80 percent were in favor of racial profiling of Arabs, Muslims, and South Asians. I know that there'll be good Americans who'll be stopped, not once, lots of times. And I know that's insulting and that's offensive and people feel like this is my home country and I can't believe this is happening to me in my home country. I'm not insensitive to that. Um, but. Uh, like everything else we do in government, we have to balance certain things. And there are rights and privileges and freedoms that, that, uh, that we have in one hand, and it, there's our safety in our other hand. We hold these truths to be self-evident that um, all people have certain inalienable rights, including the life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And it's not up to some people to give up other people's rights. Everybody has to give up their rights themselves. Um, and if it turns out that people don't want to give up their rights, it doesn't matter if a legislature uh, tries to demand that they do. Um, that's what a, a, the magic of our constitutional system. Uh, there are more enduring principles than just the latest crisis. Now, you have to remember that I'm, I'm the dean of a law school, but I'm also an Asian American. And there was a time when there was a yellow peril. And, um, you know, there's a, uh, Asians were inherently suspect, and um, guess what? It turns out that Asians can be loyal American citizens. They can be dean of leading law schools, and um, I think it's not a bad idea for people who could have been in that situation uh, 50 years earlier to say, uh, you know, let's, let's stop. Let's take a close look at it. Let's ask what's really necessary.